good morning to all today we are going to see the topic hyperlan hyperlan stands for high performance radio local area networks introduction about hyperlan roughly speaking there are two types of wireless networks they are local area network and wide area network wan so under local area network we are having bluetooth and ieee 802.1 standard family hyperlan family home or of etc under this wide area network we are having this gsm that is global standard for mobile communication 3g and 4g communication iridium communication types so here before starting this topic i just want to clarify the differences between ieee 802.11 with this hyperlan ieee 802.11 is a standard for Wi-Fi, that is wireless fidelity, local area connections. So here, this hyperlan replaces in European region. In European region, they are having different standards for this type of communication, that is local area Wi-Fi communication. So that is nothing but hyperlan. So this particular standard is developed by ETSI. ETSI is nothing but European Telecommunication Standard Institute. So here we are having the mobility and data rates for communication standards. You can see the mobility is increases for this 2G and 3G communications as well as wireless LAN. But in terms of LAN, this mobility is very less. But the data rate is very high when compared to this 2G and 3G cellular techniques. And now the main standard families for wireless LAN. They are IEEE 802.11 family. Under this, we are having IEEE 802.11b, 11a, 11g, etc. And one more standard for European region is ETSI Hyperland. So under this also, we are having different types. They are Hyperland 1, Hyperland 2, and Hyper Access Hyperlink, etc. So under this Hyperland family, we are having different types as we have seen. Hyperlan 1, Hyperlan 2, Hyper Access, Hyperlink, in which today we are going to see only Hyperlan 1. So the description is it is used for wireless Ethernet and the frequency range is 5 GHz and the physical bit rate is 23.5 megabits per second. And now motivation behind this Hyperlan is massive growth in wireless and mobile communications emergence of multimedia applications, demands for high speed internet access, deregulation of telecommunication industry. So these are all the motivational factors behind this hyperlan. The history, present and future of hyperlan type 1. Hyperlan type 1 developed by ETSA that is nothing but European Telecommunication Standard Institute during the period 1991 to 1996. Goal of this Hyperlan 1 type is to achieve higher data rate than IEEE 802.11 that is nothing but Wi-Fi. So to achieve higher data rate, the data rate must be more than 1 to 2 Mbps and to be used in ad hoc networking of portable devices. What is ad hoc networking? The network which is not having any proper infrastructure then we call it as ad hoc network. It supports asynchronous data transfer and carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance and there is no quality of service guaranteed products Praxim high speed range LAN 5 product family which is having 24 megabits per second 5 GHz and also quality of service is guaranteed the another product is radio LANs this is the product for indoor wireless LAN communication here we are having 10 Mbps speed with 5 GHz peer-to-peer -to -peer topology. Now Hyperlan type 2. We will see it later. We are concentrating only this Hyperlan 1 type. Typical application scenario. Hyperlan a complement to present day wireless access system giving high data rate to end users in hotspot areas. So this is replacing the Wi-Fi. Typical app environment. We can use this particular network model in offices, homes, exhibition halls, airports, train station, etc. 
and this is totally different from bluetooth why because the bluetooth is linking individual communication devices but here we can use this hyperland for broadcasting services so this is the way we are connecting this hyperland we can see the fixed lan here we are connecting the access points these access points are interconnected if you want to convey the information from one mobile terminal to another mobile terminal by connecting the hyperlan we are able to connect the access points from one mobile terminal to another mobile terminal so this is the way it is getting connected so here the access points connected by using hand over signal so here we are connecting the mobile terminal so this mobile terminal is connected via the routers with intranet and also the subnet masks are used to, to connect with the different types of networks so this is the way we are connecting this hyperlan now hyperlan 2 anyway the architecture of the architecture for hyperlan 1 here we are having the mac csc and physical layer for this architecture hyperlan 1 what is a mac layer so this is medium access sub layer csc is nothing but channel access control sub layer and finally we are having the physical layer which is connected to the another network by using data link control layer and also convergence layer We're going to see the physical layer in detail in the physical layer we are having the data units that is nothing but burst of variable length consist of preamble and data field and the reference configuration so here in the physical layer first we are having the data that is the physical data unit that is scrambling into the forward error correction coding into the second block so after the error is corrected which is interleaved with the mapping of data and the mapped data will be transferred to this ofdm block what is ofdm ofdm is nothing but orthogonal frequency division multiplexing so this is a multiplexing de- technique to transfer the data from the transmitter to the receiver so after this particular process is over the data will be divided into physical bursts so after the data is divided which will be transmitted to the radio transmitter from there the data will be transmitted to the receiver so this is about the physical layer of this hyperlan here the spectrum plays a crucial role in the deployment of wireless lan spectrum is nothing but a range of bandwidth which is used for transmitting or receiving the signals currently most of the wireless lan products operates in the unlicensed 2.4 gigahertz band which has several limitations that means we can use 80 megahertz bandwidth spectrum technology and also there will be interference spectrum allocation for hyperlan 2 is available in this diagram so now modulation scheme so here we are using this ofdm modulation scheme ofdm is nothing but orthogonal frequency division multiplexing under this ofdm the robustness on highly depressive channels of multipath fading and intersymbol interference will be avoided and it is spectrally efficient it admits great flexibility for different modulation alternatives it facilitated by the efficiency of fft and ifft algorithms fft is nothing but fast fourier transform and ifft is nothing but inverse fast fourier transform which is used in dsp chips and now the encoding schemes here it involves the serial sequencing of data as well as the forward error correction coding key features behind this hyperlan 1 it is flexible for transmission mode with different coding rates and modulation schemes modes are selected by link adaptation it will support different modulation schemes that they are bpsk qpsk as well as 16 qam and 64 qam supported so in this table we are able to see different types of mode with different modulation schemes and code rate as well as physical layer bit rates so now we are going to see the data link control layer so in this data link control layer we are having two different planes they are control plane and user plane so under this we are having the higher layers the first higher layer is cl saps saps is nothing but system applications cl is nothing but 
convergence layer so first layer we are having convergence layer with the system applications so in this convergence layer which is divided into dlc control system application and dlc user system application what is dlc dlc is nothing but data link control layer so under this data link control layer we are having radio link control sub layer which is divided into three different modules they are radio resource control association control dlc connection control so which is connected with the radio link control rlc so in the right hand side we are having the user system application there we are having data link control which is connected with basic data transport function with the error control and finally we want to transmit after this connection of dlc control system application with dlc user system application we need to connect with medium access control which is used to, to transmit the data and here we are having the modulation schemes so after completing all this procedure which will be connected to the physical layer for the transmission of data now there are three main control functions they are acf rrc and dcc under this acf this authentication key management disassociation encryptions all these functions performed under this radio resource control function the handover technique dynamic frequency selection mobile terminal alive absent power saving power control all these functions are performed under rrc so under dlc the setup and release of user connection multicast and broadcast will be performed so this is connection oriented therefore after completing the association a mobile terminal may request one or several dlc connections with one unique dlc address corresponding to each dlc connection thus providing different quality of service for each connections so based on the setup the quality of service will be different so now we are having this dlc max sub layer so this is the basic frame structure for dlc so in this we are having mac frame that is media access control and media access frame and finally we are having media access frame so here this media access frame is divided into different parts they are bch fch and ach so now we are going to see what is this bch fch and ach so here we are having bch is nothing but broadcast channel it will enable the control of radio resources fch is nothing but frequency channel which will extract description of the allocation of resources within the current mac frame and finally we are having this ach it is nothing but access feedback channel it conveys the information on previous attempts at random access multi beam antennas are used up to 8 beam supported a connection oriented approach here the quality of service is guaranteed and hyperland implements quality of service through time slots qas parameters that is nothing but the quality of service parameters we are having bandwidth bit error rate latency and jitter and the next thing is the original request by the mobile terminal to send data <coughs> uses specific time slots that are allocated for random access the access point grants access by allocating specific time slot for specific duration in transport channel finally the mobile terminal sends the data without interruption from the other mobile terminal operating on that frequency a control channel provides feedback to the center and dlc error control dlc is nothing but data link control so here how we are going to perform this error control mechanism first we are having this acknowledged mode which is having the selective repeat arq and next thing is repetition mode typically used for broadcast so which will repeat the broadcasting service continuously and the next thing is unacknowledged mode which is unreliable and low latency there are other features are available under dlc they are radio network functions dynamic frequency selections handover link adaptation multi beam antennas and power control and finally we are having this quality of service support 
for appropriate error control mode selected scheduling performed at mac level link adaptation internal functions what are they admission congestion control and dropping off mechanism for avoiding overload of data and finally the conclusion whether the hyperland stand replace 802.11 already i said this 802.11 is iterably standard which is used in us and this hyperland is uh, is the replacement in european countries there will be a fight bet between connection and connectionless scams of hyperland 2 with iterably 802.11a current products under development and becoming available only offer 25 mbps hyperlink 155 mbps data rate still some way off wireless which is useful as an adjunct to the wired world thank you